Hey everyone, Kevin here. Uh, two things before we kick off this episode. One, we're doing a giveaway. I want you to pay attention. Uh, during this episode, we talk a little bit about Box VR. It's a game by FitXR, and it's specific to fitness within the virtual reality headset. It was a lot of fun. We're going to be playing a little bit more and doing a full review, but the folks over at FitXR gave us a code that we can do a giveaway with. So we're looking forward to allowing our listeners a chance at a giveaway, but not all of our listeners have VR. So I will still want you to participate because if you can't utilize the VR code, we want you to still be able to utilize a code. So we're going to do a $10 gift card for second place to the store of their choosing. And the first place will get this box VR game for the PlayStation VR North America region. To get it, you need to go to the link in our show notes that talks about the Anchor voicemail. Now in our ads that we've had for the last couple of weeks, uh, we talk about how Anchor has a voicemail system. Use the link. Leave us a sound bite. You can give us a little bit of yeah, yeah, a little bit of something, something, or whatever else you want to give. Joe and I are going to review those different sound bites that are left behind. We may use them in a future episode. The first place is going to get Box VR. Second place is going to get a $10 gift card to either the Sony Store, Steam, I guess Epic. I mean, anywhere really. Uh, we'll do a $10 card uh, for a second place. We really look forward to uh, doing this giveaway. We're going to have two weeks to provide this voicemail. And again, if you have any issues getting to the voicemail system, it's in the show notes if you're on iTunes or Google or wherever. Just go ahead and check out the details in your app. And uh, I believe that Anchor, our hosting platform, will, will implement a link at the bottom and you can just click on it and it should take you to the site where you can record it. I think you can record it from your phone or from your computer or wherever. It should be pretty easy. If you have any issues, please give us a shout out on Twitter, Instagram, wherever, email, and we'll definitely help you get this voicemail going. We want to utilize this this tool that's uh, available to us, and I think it would be pretty cool to get some cool sound bites for us to play on the podcast. Second thing I want to talk about is the episode you're about to listen to. It's a little bit unique. Joe came to Jacksonville to visit for his birthday, and we had a lot of fun this week. Uh, we spent a lot of time relaxing, talking about the podcast and what we're going to be doing and things like that, and our streams, both Twitch and YouTube. Uh, Joe just got affiliate not too long ago, so he's really focused on trying to enhance that and, and provide his uh, his followers with some content. But we had to do a lot of family time, and we didn't get a lot of time away to just do the podcast and record. So what we ended up doing was we knew we were going to SeaWorld with the families, and we brought a recorder. And Joe and I did an interview together in the downstairs of the SeaWorld Dolphin exhibit. We didn't have to do it walking around, which probably wouldn't have been as good. Uh, so the audio has a lot of people in the background. There was a rainstorm, pretty bad thunderstorm here in Florida. All the rides got shut down, and it was pouring pretty bad. So we all got tucked underneath into this dolphin exhibit. Uh, we were out of the rain, but there was a lot of people around. So we interviewed a few people. Um, we talked to a lot of people down there, and we drew a bit of a crowd uh, as we conducted this, uh, you know, Joe and I's interview, episode number 59 of the backlog. It was pretty awesome to do. And I look forward to other types of events like going to comic cons and things like that and interviewing members of the uh, the different events and things that are going on. Um, it was a lot of fun to do this and, and glad it worked out. Uh, so the awkwardness comes from the fact that the background has a lot of audio and stuff in it, but it plays really well. Bear with us as you go through it. It does not sound too bad. I do need to get a little bit better at holding the mic without making any noise, but, you know, we'll get there. Again, appreciate y'all listening. We look forward to next week's episode 60. Uh, we're really grinding away, and uh, we're almost coming up on our year. So um, without further ado, let's kick it off. Episode 59 of the Backlog Podcast. <laughs> You're listening to the Backlog Podcast with hosts Kevin Lane and Joel Rubel, bringing you weekly discussions on gaming, as well as sports, entertainment, and anything else that they can think of. What it do, what it ain't, what it could be, yeah. Be sure to check us out online at thebacklogpod.com, where you can listen to the podcast and get links to Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. What, what? I'm Joe. I'm Kevin. And we are the Backlog Podcast. Yeah, yeah. Now, gear up and get ready, because we're about to check another one off of The Backlog. Hey everybody, this is Kevin Bacon Lane, and I'm standing here in the underground world of sea with my one and only co-host, Sniper Joe. Sniper Joe, <laughs> Sniper <laughs> Joe. Shout out to Sniper Joe. <laughs> <laughs> That's my cousin. So Joe and I are here in SeaWorld. Episode what, 50? Uh, 60. 60, episode 59. We're at SeaWorld Orlando. 
I can count literally at least 20 dolphins sitting in front of me right now. It is storming out. What's the date? Joe's birthday. Oh, it is my birthday. Happy birthday, me. Happy birthday, him. Give a shout out to Joe, everybody. (laughs) His wife said, yeah, yeah. Can you give dad a little bit of yeah, yeah? No. (laughs) Can you give your dad a little bit of yeah, yeah? Yeah, yeah. That's a little quiet. Yeah, yeah. I need a big yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Can I get a little bit of yeah, yeah? Yeah, yeah. That's my boy. I got it. Little bit something, something. <laughs> Joe turns the big 2-1 today. And uh, don't tell the bartenders. He's been drinking for a couple years. That's right. That's right. At least five. At least five. What are you, 34 now? Uh, yeah, I'm 34. 34, man. I remember I remember the day I was 34. And... Uh, was it like two months ago? How like old are you? 40? I'm almost 40. I'm 30, 39 in a month. Somebody get this man a walker. So Joe and I have been doing a little vacation in here. Joe came on down with his family down from Kentucky, down to Jacksonville, Florida. How do you like it? Oh, it's all right. I couldn't live here. Yeah, it's, it's too... damn lizards. A lot of lizards. He's like, we get to, he gets to the house and he says, hey, look, there's a lizard. Kayla, look, oh, come here, run, 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 run. I was like, dude, there's a million of them. Like a lizard every two feet in the backyard. Instantly, you're like shocked and it's pretty awesome. And then you're like, get the fuck away. <laughs> All the lizards are just annoying. Then I started spraying with a water hose. Yeah, you did. He took out a couple bees with a water Kaylee, hose. Kaylee and Caleb cut one. There we go. We're back, and we're back. <laughs> we're back, and we're back. I don't think we ever left. But, I don't uh, think we did either. So, we got E3 coming up. You know, we don't know what's going on right now, but um, we've been following a little bit, a couple stories. And the, the whole reason we're recording now, and it may sound weird, it may sound awesome, it may sound uh, like we're in the middle of an auditorium, but, you know, we, we are out and about. Uh, we want to do a little live podcast, but um, timing just hasn't been right. We've been, unfortunately, uh, Joe's just been sucked into that VR. So, uh, you know, we've been playing um, every night now, I think, since you've been here. I ain't gonna lie, it is fun. Beat Saber's fun. Uh, Astrobot's fun. Uh, what was the other one I was playing? Autobots or? Yeah, Electronauts. Electronauts. That game is fun as hell. That's a hidden gem. Electronauts is one of those ones that uh, you don't hear too many people talk about it, but every person who's played it talks really highly of it. I like it. I think it's fun as hell. I mean, it is. But all the other games, we have to walk around and move your head at the same time. I, I don't like those. Yeah, there, there's some. I mean, I, he jumped into um, Borderlands 2 VR, which is his favorite game, Borderlands 2. We'll, we'll talk about the DLC here in a minute. But so you jumped into Borderlands 2. Um, what? Besides the uh, the motion and all that, did you with the graphics just not there, or were they good? I mean, it looked, it looked good. It's just I didn't like the fact that it made me sick within a matter of a few minutes because you're walking around moving the camera and your head. You could do it in option directions, and it just it made me sick pretty quick. Yeah, and, and what makes you what what throws you off too is just that balance and everything. And the second you start getting it, it's kind of hard to, to push through. But um, he did he did jump on the game and the uh, the wheel. He yeah. got himself into the rig and uh, did. What did you think of Drive Club playing on that? Uh, it was about as, as realistic as driving a real car. I mean, it was fun. Steering wheel, gas pedal, brake, clutch, gears. Uh, it was fun. That didn't even make me sick, which is weird. I know, because well, th- your brain, I-, I think, and this is all, I always say this, I think it's partially because when you're going that fast, for real, your brain's interpreting something it's not used to. So it makes exceptions to the rule. But when you're walking around a land, you do that all the time. And when it's not normal to your brain, your brain's saying this isn't this is uncomfortable, and that's why I think personally, there's more of a, you know, because they, they I was telling Joe about how um, they say that if you have a fan, or you know you're chewing ginger or something or gum, that that helps counterbalance the the effects of the nausea. But um, it's all in your head. My dad used to say that all. You ain't sick. It's in your head. Yeah. And, makes and this is a real situation where it's truly in your head because ain't nothing happening but your head seeing stuff. So. Um, what was your favorite experience so far? I would say uh, Beat Saber. That's probably the best game out there for VR that I've played. I've played about five or six. I'd say Beat Saber, hands down, is the funnest. My kids enjoy it. My wife likes it. So I'll be getting a VR when I get back, but it's I'm only going to play those type of games. I'm not playing anything that makes me sick. Now, you didn't get a chance yet, but you're going to be probably tonight playing uh, some box VR. And uh, we've, been, we've been waiting for this. The reason you didn't get a chance is because me and my wife stole... Oh, geez, that's Wesley. That's my son. Should we should we interview him? Yeah, go get an interview from him. Hey, Wesley, please tell us what happened. <laughs> all right. He just tripped and fell. Uh, we, we tell them all the time, don't run. They don't listen, so I don't feel too bad. Hey, Jagger. What do you do? Jagger. 
Ooh, get over here. Let me see it. Ooh. All right, Jagger, come here. Jagger, come here. So, when you uh, threw your brother to the ground so hard, um, what did it sound like when his knee struck the ground? I didn't do that. Good. Caleb, when you picked up Wesley over your head and chucked him across the room and he landed on his knee, how did that make you feel? Sad. <laughs> oh, so you did do it. Oh. I'm just kidding. Hey, Wesley. Wesley, tell everybody that you're okay. I'm okay. All right. What happened? Tell us what happened. I, I bumped in there and I fell. Were you running? Yes. Did Daddy say stop running? Yes. So, did you just want to run? Yes. Did you want to cut your knee open? No. Ooh, was Daddy right? Yes. All right. Mama, how do you feel? <laughs> Good. All right. Oh, look at this is First Aid Joe. First Aid Joe. Shout out to the MMA Marks. Oh, gone. It's fixed. <laughs> so, uh, give a little quick shout out to the MMA Marks. So, what, what about this uh, Borderlands 2 DLC? Uh, let's actually, I'm going to let you talk about this and like tell everyone what, what happened. That you know, we talked about a couple weeks ago how it was going to be free, or we didn't weren't sure if it was going to be free. Yeah, so there was a rumor about two weeks ago. Ray Bebe found out, and he said, "Ray Bebe, <laughs> shout out Ray Bebe." Sent me an email and um, did a little research on it, and, and it, there was a lot of rumors. But like I said, Ray was like, "Man, there's a, these rumors that's coming out are from some very high sourced, you know, um, outlets." And uh, lo and behold, E3 released it. I think yesterday or the day before that it was going to come out with the DLC. And the DLC was going to be free. And basically, they're uh, coming. I guess the enemies for Borderlands 3 is coming to take over Sanctuary from Borderlands 2. So uh, I've seen some gameplay of it already. Looks pretty badass. The uh, I guess there's mutants that's uh, in the game. So they kind of changed it to a mutant type theme. New weapons, new skins, new gear. Um, yeah, it looks awesome. So uh, it's going to be a good segue to Borderlands 3. I, like, I love the fact that they, they didn't even mess around. Borderlands is currently the PlayStation game of the month uh, for free if you have PS Plus. Yeah, the Handsome Jack collection. Which includes two, right? Yep. So the Handsome Jack collection is free right now, and it comes with that DLC. So, boom. You walk into Borderlands 3 with the whole entire saga under your belt. Does, does the Handsome Jack come with that other one? The, uh, the, the Yeah, I believe it comes with, um, I believe the whole Handsome Jack collection is Borderlands 1, 2, and then um, and the pre-sequel. Or it could just be two in the pre I can't remember, but Borderlands 1's only like 30 bucks, and it's worth it, so. Yeah, and we just, ha we just got that, uh, um, whatever, that updated edition of Borderlands 1. I'm still playing through that, but uh, Joe, Joe went in and out of that one with Ray, like, lightning, because uh, they're so attuned to it. Um, he'll have to come in and help me clean some house a little bit. and, and uh, yeah, we ended up platinum, platinum that game. Ray platinum before I did, but we ended up platinum probably 20, 30 hours. Yeah, and I think that, Going back to the VR for just a moment, the um, the concept and the idea of uh, that sickness, if they can master that, so Joe, let's say let's say they can stop that, whatever causes that. There's already talk about making it wireless. You know, there's always patents going out, at least trying. If they can figure out how to keep, if they can figure out how to keep the people from getting motion sickness or you know whatever, make it as realistic but not as motion sickness as people get, they'll sell 10 times the amount. Plus, if you bring out wireless, because last night I was playing and I was getting frustrated as shit. I kept hitting the cord and it was in my way when I was playing Beat Saber. And, but in all honesty, that's the only game where it gets in the way is Beat Saber. Well, no, well, again, we, um, the box VR. Well, the box VR too, yeah. They get, they get tied up when you start moving around, but the games you gotta really move around and they get in the way, but everything else isn't too bad. So I want to talk about this a little bit. Joe, Joe was watching. I was, I was segueing into this before my son uh, literally put his kneecap through his skin. And um, no, he didn't really do that. So, <laughs> um, so the folks over at FitXR, uh, it's been a little while. So apologies for the delay, but I wanted to make sure. We knew Joe was coming uh, to visit us here in Jacksonville. I wanted to be sure we both had a chance to try it because Joe was adamant. He didn't really want to get into the VR, but then we put him on Beat Saber. And uh, just like almost everybody who, who plays that game, you fold. You know, it's, there's just a, a fun about it. Just like Guitar Hero, the first time you pick up that guitar. And so Joe got to watch. Um, he's going to play a little bit tonight. And I dove in and played uh, at least, what, 
40 to 50 minutes myself and then Crystal, my wife. Yeah, she played quite a bit of it too. Matter of fact, she was sore the next morning trying to walk around. Yeah, she's still sore two days later. That was two days, two nights ago. And uh, it was funny because she's not into, oh, I'm not going to play, I'm not going to play. And then she saw me do it and I said, your turn. And she was like, I am not doing that. And then she put the headset on and then the song was over. And then without taking that headset off, what'd she do? Played another one. And she played after that one, what'd she do? Played another one. And it, it, it was pretty much like that for a bit. And every time she stopped, she, she let out a sigh. That shit, okay, for those of you who aren't familiar with what box VR is, um, it's essentially the same concept from a video game perspective as, uh, as Beat Saber. You're in a um, room, although I got to tell you, inside that headset, Joe, it feels like you're really in a gym or whatever. Like they, they did a really good job with the interior. In Beat Saber, you're standing in this void, but in Box VR, it looks like you're in a gym. You, set, you, you pick your trainer, so you get to pick from a couple different trainers, and they have different difficulties. Oh, we ended it too, I forgot. That's right, yeah. And uh, so they have a bunch of different um, trainers and a bunch of different um, experiences, right? So they have different lengths that they ask you. How long do you want it to be? Wesley, get over here. They ask you how long you want the experience to be, and um, once you get going, um, the balls just start coming right towards your face. That is pretty hard, but they do come towards your face. And, and so you gotta you gotta bend backwards and and forwards. You kind of gotta get your ass out in there sometimes. A little bit, yeah. It's kind of weird. When the balls are, you know, you got a blue ball, and you got a red ball, right? And uh, you you kind of got to swing them. They dangle. <laughs> they, they dangle. And uh, what you got to do is you got to give it a hook. You got to give it an uppercut. You got to do a little slide, a little left jab, right jab. Yeah. And so I couldn't get the hang of it at first. My wife ended up showing me how it was done, which was kind of funny because I was like, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. And she was like, watch this shit. And uh, next thing you know, she's over here scoring points and all that. But um, – Shout out to the FitXR guys. They they put together a pretty awesome product that it also counts your calories, right? Yeah. What else did you did you notice anything else um, from a, a fitness perspective, like whether it be from her attitude or my attitude getting out of that thing? Everybody was out of breath. <laughs> but like, were we mad or, or you know what I mean? I don't know. Like, no, everybody was re- almost like they were relaxed. Honestly, it was fun. Yeah, Chris, Crystal was like, "Oh, that's gonna hurt." Um, I am gonna bug her right now because she don't want to. Uh, she don't want to talk, but real quick, um, what do you think about that that uh, box of VR? It's a pretty decent workout. Yeah. Do you still feel it a couple days later? Yes. Yeah, so she says it's for real. She doesn't get on here too often. I'm making her talk, but um, Joe's wife, Leanne, she's over here taking care of the kids. You hear them screaming in the background. That's all hers. All right. But uh, Leanne also, uh, she went nuts. She says, she, Leanne's a mute. <laughs> so she's signing to me right now, and she says it was amazing, right? Is that what the, that is that what that letter is? That's the amazing mute sign. Yeah. All right. And Wesley, what did you think of Beat Saber? Good. Good. All right. So we have some we have some kids who actually played the heck out of Beat Saber this weekend. Come on over, because I want to hear what y'all think of VR over top of games like Fortnite. And uh, some of these other games you play. What do you think of um, Beat Saber? I love it. I can, I'm so good at it. I can beat hard in one, like one, one minute. Wow. So Jagger actually got off of the, his ass off of Fortnite, jumped into Beat Saber, and he was supposed to be out with us at a fire pit, but I was looking inside, and he was actually playing Beat Saber, and, and he would mess up or do good, and he would keep trying. And I didn't stop him because he kept trying. I got, I got past hard mode in two tries. Exactly. And Kaylee, what did you think of Beat Saber? Because you, you hadn't played it before this weekend, right? Did you even know it existed? So you knew it existed. So once you got in there, what, did it, what was it like? Um, it was very fun. Yeah, right. Well, did you, did, you like, did you use a lot of energy or were you really like slow? I mean, what did you do? Uh, you have to use a lot of energy. Yeah. And, and so when you're like... Tell them what you're supposed to do. Like, how do you get points? You have to hit the blocks right and move around. Can I just stab the blocks with, like, like a fork? No. You have to hit them in the direction they're pointing. Okay, okay. So, say I hit the blue saber onto the red. What happens? Uh, that would be an X. Cause that would be an X. Now, what if I 
have a giant red block coming right at me. What do I got to do? You have to hit it the direction it's facing. No, no, no. I'm talking like a giant one. It looks like a wall coming right at me. Oh, then you, you have to dodge it. Okay. So there's all sorts of things, right? Now, in box VR, they do the same thing. Do you remember that, Joe? Yeah. What do they have to do there? Same thing. It's up. You have to go to the side underneath of it, to the right and the left, and then there's like an angle block, too. Yeah, but the coolest thing about the box VR, in my opinion was the repetition so like well it's it's just like going to the gym it's one two three one two three all the way through yeah. but like they'll do it so you're going on for five minutes right and it's right leg down you're doing squats you don't even realize it because you're just trying to get out of the, the way and then it switches and now the angle of the bar is the other direction and now you're doing squats with your left leg and so uh crystal loves those those hey, standing Caleb. squats how would you like uh, beat saber caleb so when you played beat saber which color was your favorite the blue or the red the blue and the wood the blue and the red, good answer. So, um, do you like the fast songs or the steady, slow songs? The steady songs. Steady, slow songs. And how did you do? Did you do pretty good? Yeah, I did really good. I would say you did pretty good. Uh, I think you got a couple first or second places up there that I got to go in there and try to beat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what other games in VR did you like? Did you play anything else? I played something else, but I forgot what the name. Uh, what else did he play? Oh, did you play? Did you play Electronauts? Electronauts. The, the drums. Oh yeah, I played that. What did you think about Electronauts? It was amazing. Amazing. That's actually a pretty good answer. Did you make music? Yes. And did it sound good or bad? Good. I think it did sound pretty good. Um, when you got in there, did you try a, a bunch of different songs? Not really. You didn't need to, right? Just one was enough. No, like I tried a couple though. Okay, okay. That's pretty awesome. Did you use the grenades? Yeah. Yeah, your dad loves those grenades. Yeah, that was, it was fun, dude. He couldn't get that out of his mind when he was playing uh, on the... <laughs> what was that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <sighs> now, what would you think of um, a game as, as fast-paced as, like, Call of Duty in that type of uh, environment? I'd throw up. What if, the, going back to the other thing, I mean, and obviously right now, there's probably no chance you could play something like that without getting sick, but, um, what I mean, if, if they figure if they figure it out, I'd love to play. It looks, it's awesome. I mean, everything inside the VR, it does look good. It just, I don't like getting sick. One of the, uh, one of the killer games that kind of hit the market last year, that it took off, it sold a lot of copies, um, and then it kind of died down just because the VR market's not huge, but was a uh, Firewall Zero Hour. And it was, they did everything they could to keep the pace slow so that you don't get sick, but it's the gun, right? You're walking around with that gun, and it's close quarters. It's, and, they, and they did that as, on purpose as well. Like, close quarters makes it so you can't sprint, and you're not like, you uh, know. Same thing as the other game I initially played. Was it Wavepoint? Um, no, uh, break, uh, Farpoint. Farpoint. Yeah, that game, it was amazing. The, the quality was great. That was one of the original games out, but, man, it made me sick. Yeah, that one, that game right there, uh, I broke through the whatever sickness. Once I got past the sickness on Farpoint, um, I just, I fell in love with that game. It, it got a lot of these games. They get either a lot of love or a lot of hate. Hey, bud, can you stop climbing all over us, Jagger? So uh, we got a lot of love from me because, uh, and I'll, even this is actually something you did too, um, and maybe rightfully so because of the game Accounting Plus, uh, but... I, when I play games, I take my time. I don't rush. Jed would come over. He played Farpoint. And there's sections, a story. And the story might be 30, 40 seconds or a minute and a half. That helps slow the pace and helps keep you from getting that fatigue or getting that uh, sickness, right? And I think that's in there on purpose, not just to move the story, but to slow the pace down a little bit. Um, you were playing Accounting Plus, which is just one of the stupidest but silliest VR games you can get. And the, the guy from the guys from uh, Rick and Morty put that together. Yeah. And since then, they put together a couple of games. They got Prison Break or something like that, and they got um, they got a couple. Of, they just came out with a, another one, uh, Trover versus the Universe, and they're all in the similar style of just like these cartoony things, uh, really no point. But um, one of the cool things about those games. Yeah, one of the cool things about those games, particularly in my opinion, is that they can take you into another world that's obviously fake and cartoony. Well, yeah, that game that I played on Accounting Plus didn't make me sick at all. It's just real damn goofy. 
It's goopy. And that's I, I'm not a Rick and Morty uh, fan. I don't know. I'm not going to say fan because I don't want to piss people off, but I don't get into it. Yeah, I've, I've watched a couple episodes. It's funny as shit. But uh, I, there's a it's lot not of... not something I would watch all the time, but I mean... But there's people kids, out there who... around, too, so you can't watch out with kids. True, true. There, but there's there's people out there that who swear by that show like I swear by The Simpsons when I was growing up. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, there's a lot of people I know. Like, Ray, he's a huge Rick and Morty fan. Is he? Well, he probably loved these games. Tell him about it. Tell him that Rick and Morty guys have, like, three, four games out. Um, but I love the fact that people are putting all different types of content in the, the VR that don't even that don't even really like make sense or have to make sense but it's there and it's not expensive uh, they're even putting this game the Trover one in a new bundle coming up uh, and it, if you're interested in all this VR talk check it out they, uh, they got a couple of deals right now with the days of play um, over the next week or two you can get like a $50 discount on that 350 bundle it comes with Beat Saber and Borderlands but if I were you, um, we'll look at it in a little bit here while we're walking around SeaWorld, but um, there's a couple of different bundles that come with the two sticks. Beat Saber's not expensive. It's like $29 or, or 20 So you might be better off getting a different bundle if you're not going to play the Borderlands and then just buying Beat Saber on the side. Yeah, that's true, too. So um, anything else that you've seen or heard about on E3 that uh, that you're interested in? I mean, I know they've, they've had a couple of releases. They had... Um, not really, man, because we've been... I'm on vacation, so I haven't really looked at anything about E3 or anything like that right now. I was just more worried about the DLC for Borderlands 2. Yeah, so um, Cyberpunk 2077. They've been talking about that. It's getting a release date. I think it's April 2020. Uh, and then a couple of other games have been... Um, I've been getting notifications all day. Seems like they're starting to set some of this stuff up in stone with uh, releases. And obviously, you know, some, t- some years E3 just ain't, the, ain't all that. I have a feeling with all the announcements coming before E3 even starts, which is coming up here in a day or two, uh, that we're, we're due for something big. Yeah, I think something big's going to happen, especially with the EA Game Pass and all that. So Joe, he was on travel. He was traveling to Jacksonville when Google announced Stadia. And he got here, and I was so excited I had to sit his ass down. And we watched that whole press event together. And uh, we both, well, I don't know if you pre-ordered yet, but we, pre-ordered yet. I pre-ordered. Joe's about to pre-order. And uh, Joe, what, what, okay, I mean, this is kind of an obvious answer, but what really knocks it out of the park for Stadia? Well, for one, there's no console no more, and it's only $10 a month. And but, it's all the games you want, and they're right there. You can just buy them play whenever you want. Remember, though, uh, it's not even $10 a month if you don't want it to be? Oh, yeah. It depends on how, how, what quality you want. You can have 720 for, I think, $6 a month or something like that. Not even. Free. You, could, you don't even have to become a quote-unquote Stadia subscriber. If there is a game on Stadia that you oh, want. I'm talking about quality-wise. Like, the quality is 720 and that quality is $6 a month. And no, 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 no. The only thing that costs money is 4K. That's the $10 a month. Oh, cool. And you, with that 4K, you get the, um, the monthly gaming bundle deals and things like that. Sweet. If you just want to buy a game, 60 bucks or whatever they're going to be, and uh, you have your own controller, you can walk in and you're playing at 1080p if you have a good enough connection, which they said was what, 25 or 35 megabits per second? Something low. Something that it'd be hard for you to go out and find to, like, get. Like, it's... You, Every, every other company's got like 30 or 40 meg now. You can't even find the the low quality that they were talking about. You, you, do you know Do you know somebody who who can't get it? Who's that? Jed. Why is that? Because he doesn't live in America. Ha ha. <laughs> and guess what game is going to be on there? What's that? Elder Scrolls. Ha ha. Guess what game's his favorite game? Elder Scrolls. Ha 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 ha. You play video games? No. So. uh... That would have been awesome if she did. That uh, would have been good. We're, we're running a podcast about yeah. video games, so oh. you're standing right next to me. I was say, <laughs> what games do you play? Have you ever no. played video games? No. Never? No. Mario? No. Zelda? No. Pinball? No. Arcade? No. Oh, my goodness. Cards? No. Solitaire? Solitaire. There That's we cards. Go. <laughs> we got a winner. <laughs> Solitaire. There's your best. Crossword puzzles? Yes. Mahjong? Not crossword puzzles. Wait, Sage. Wait, Sage. There you go. Wait, it's all it's all gaming. Wait, what's, that? what's that one? What's that one? Uh, Sudoku. Sudoku. Sudo- yeah. 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 Yep. Up. That's it's, a hard one. I don't like that one. Don't like Sudoku. No, it's too hard. It's too hard. And where are you from? England, Liverpool. England, Liverpool. Nice. Like the Beatles. Yes. That Beatles. is awesome. 
Abby. You don't like the Beatles. You don't like the Beatles. How is that possible? How is that possible? I just don't like them. And what what is your name? Sue. Sue, you don't like the Beatles. Is it just you're not not your style of music, or is it uh, the band itself? The band itself just don't like them. Wow. Do you like the Rolling Stones? Nope. Uh oh. ACDC. Okay. Now we're talking. She she re she redeemed herself. All right. She's from Liverpool. Don't like the Beatles, but it's okay because she likes ACDC. Country Western. Brian Johnson. Do you like Do you like Old Town Road? Yes. Yes. Hey, Wesley. Wesley. Wesley, come sing this nice lady Old Town Road. She wants to hear it. Yeah, take my horse to the Old Town Road. I'm going ride till I can't no more. I'm going take my horse to the Old Town Road. I'm going ride till I can't no more. Good job. Hey, high five. Awesome job, Wes. It was nice talking to you all. And you. Thank you. Take care. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, when you're in, in a close quarters, you just have to make friends. Oh, yeah. We're all about that. I learned from Joe. I learned from the best. And he would, he would not discourage it for a second. Nope. It just looked like a mirror. Two dolphins just split apart, and it looked like they were running against a mirror, but they're literally perfectly in tune with each other. I swear, I'm going to tell you, I think dolphins, uh, I think they rule us. They're smart, man. Haven't you seen the SpongeBob movie? I have. I have. <laughs> <laughs> Fun Bob Square Pants. So, um, seriously, there's at least 40 dolphins just swimming around. My mom's favorite thing in the world, man. Dolphins? Yeah, so this one time, um, after she passed, uh, Crystal and I, were, we got home, and um, I was not in good, you know, not in good, good way. I had a, my t-shirt business, right? And I had, well, at that time, it was the height of my t-shirt business. Easily... 150 sales while out just the, the 10 days I was gone, right? Which was a lot for me on the side, you know? And I came home and I had to place a, um, an order for t-shirts and I had to drive down to Clearwater from Tampa to pick up the t-shirts. And so um, on my way down, that, that car I was telling you about, that Jetta? Yeah. The, um, the whole transmission blew on the middle of the Clearwater interstate, the, uh, the highway, I uh, forget the name of the bridge, Courtney Campbell Bridge. Which is like an 11-mile bridge or something like that, right in the middle of it. And I was in the fast lane going about 85. I went from 85 to about 40 in less than a second. Thought thought I hit a wall. Damn. And I veered off the road. Uh, there was no shoulder on the left or the right, but the cars behind me kept swerving around me. And in my rearview mirror, every time someone swerved around, the car behind them did not know I was there, and almost rear-ended me. So I just closed my eyes and banked it right, and I felt dirt, and I hit. A patch of dirt off the side of the right road. I went through four lanes with my eyes closed. No shit. I'm not lying. I, was, I thought I was going to die. And uh, so anyways, I get off the side of the road, 110 degrees on the side of that highway, right? I'm walking around. I started kicking the shit out of this car. I was kicking it side of the road. I was so mad. I had like negative bars of service. So every two seconds I'd come in, I could barely get in touch with anybody. And uh, this was, you know, this was 2007. So like cell phone service was okay, but not that great. Texting was still costing money and stuff. Well, anyways, I'm sitting there standing on the side of this thing looking out the Tampa Bay for an hour and a half waiting for Crystal to come get me. She finally shows up, and then now we got to wait for the tow truck. And we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. And we're just looking in this water for like, I was there for a good two hours, two and a half hours, looking into the same speck of water, right? And Crystal, standing next to me, she comes walking up. And she goes, oh, Kevin, look at that in the water. And I had, I mean, this water, I'd been staring into it for two hours. All of a sudden, I looked down, and out of the, the, uh, the muck in the water, two giant stingrays, right? G they had been there the whole time under the mud. And they just fluttered out of the water. And as soon as they did that, kicked up the dirt. Kick up the dirt, all of a sudden, a school of fish comes along. Now, the la one of the last things my mom ever did in her life was on a cruise out of Tampa Bay. So I got to see her. They went on out into the water, and she swam with the fucking stingrays. So when I saw that, I almost broke down. I was like, that's awesome, you know? And then this school of fish comes through. And, I mean, these fish, there was millions of them. And I'm, I had been looking in this water for two hours. Didn't see a single thing move. Crystal shows up all of a sudden. Now we got a school of fish swimming by. And it was like the hair in the back of your neck starts standing up because my mom loved fish, right? She loved the whole aquatics. So that starts happening, right? Fish are going by. And I'm like, 
wow, that's amazing. And then, all of a sudden, these catfish had to be bigger than my head, bigger than my body, huge catfish. And she always had a catfish in her, in her, in her uh, tank, you know? And so I see these catfish swim by. She always had two catfish in her, in her fish tank. So these two giant catfish, and I was just like, this is, this is stupid. And Krista goes, this is amazing. I wonder if we'll see a dolphin. The second, this is no lie, second she said the word dolphin about 20 yards out, a dolphin pops out of the fucking water, looks right at us and goes, eh, 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 and then splashes backwards in the water. I felt like Truman Show. I swear to you, I, I, I lost my mind. I started crying. I didn't know what to do. It was like, I needed that at that moment more than anything. I'm not, you know, I don't have a... I don't follow any type of religion, nothing like that. But that moment, I was like, holy shit, my mom is saying hi. You know, pretty much. it was nuts. And um, so whenever we went to like aquariums and stuff, this type of exhibit that we're standing in right now is pretty much where she always wanted to be. She'd stand here for two hours, no problem. And uh, it was funny because she loved dolphins and no one really ever knew because one year my dad bought her a bunny for, Easter, for her birthday because she said she liked bunnies. And every year he bought her different bunnies, tons of bunnies. Bigger bunnies, bigger bunnies, and then by the like towards the end of her life, she was like, "I don't really care much for bunnies." And my dad was like, "Wait, what? You don't like those bunnies? I mean, you spent hundreds of dollars on these bunnies, ceramic bunnies." And uh, she's like, "No, I like dolphins." So she went swimming with the fucking dolphins, you know. Uh, so it's uh, it's cool to be able to like see these things. These animals are like. You know, you, you look at them just like, oh, they're fish, but they're so much smarter. They're so much, like, more coherent. They're playing with each other. They're hanging out. They obviously have friends. Like, these two over here have been together since we got here just hanging out together. So, um, I don't know. SeaWorld got a bad rap for all the shit they did. Well, but they, did a, they got a bad rap for all the orcas that they messed with. Yeah, and, and rightfully so, right? Well, I believe so. I mean, the documentary proved it that they mistreated the shit out of them. So, I mean. Yeah, and, and also when you think about how the whales have mentality like these dolphins and they they love each other and in that documentary they talked a hell of a lot about how when they separated them they did it on purpose to kind of like make sure that they were doing certain things and like the mothers would wail for days and weeks like looking for their kid yep. and uh so you know it's it sucks when when money gets involved with stuff like this it don't matter how much you know emotion goes into it the big big bosses say this is how it's going to be done and but it's kind of shitty, but at the same time, it's well-deserved for them to shut this place up like that. Yep. But on the other hand, it's awesome to be able to come to a place like this with amusement parks. you got roller coasters. you got uh, all sorts of little things to do. And you got basically a giant aquarium everywhere you walk. Yeah, I like it here. So, um, all right, enough uh, sidetrack here. We're going to start to wrap it up, but um, I'm going to give the microphone to Joe for just one minute. Nick, Nick, Patty Wag. This old man. Came rolling on. Yeah. Yeah. Little bit of something. Something. Yeah. Yeah. My wife says, yeah, yeah. She signed it to me. She's not really mute, guys. She just does not want to talk to nobody. Happy birthday. Ooh, I got a little bit of happy birthday out of her, though, on That's the cool. mic. That's going on the podcast. Google Stadia comes on out, and as we, were, we alluded to, we'll, we'll give you some quick, clear details. So basically... Uh, Google has servers. Those servers are super fast, and they're everywhere, and they're in the most important parts of the world. They know how to transfer data and transfer data extremely fast. So they set up a uh, price and plan system. It's like 10 bucks a month, and you get yourself 4K video and um, 3D audio or whatever it is, 5.1 audio for 9.99 a month, and you're also going to have a service much like PS Plus or Xbox, Xbox Live. Now, as you know, Xbox Live, PS Plus, they're about $60 a year at the base price. Obviously, you can wait for sales and shit, but the base price is $60 a year. So if you take $10 a month and you times that by 12, that's $120 a year, right? $120 a year. Now, if you just take out $60 a month, I'm sorry, $60 a year equivalent for a service, if their service is the equivalent of a plus or a gold, well, then you're paying $60 a year for a gaming system. A virtual gaming system and you're getting the free games and all that all that with the uh, the plus service and then you can play them on their whatever now well, that's a good thing too that the system's never gonna go bad the system and they've already said it in their their press conference they're gonna be upgrading that system every chance they get and Google takes no no messing around I mean they're if they upgrade if, if they find a better way to make your system better like before every special launch that Sony has they will do that for sure 
And so they have, they probably are releasing this thing under very, very low key conditions, knowing that they can upgrade it at any time if they need to. And I don't know. I mean, I just assume you always have to worry, right? When, when a company comes along like Google and can take over the world snap of the fingers like fucking Thanos, um, and they have that power. When a company has that type of power, you got to question it. They're in our homes. They have our, our, our voices and everywhere in their phones. And um, But what, what do you think? Do you think what service they provide is more good than bad or more bad than good? I don't know. It really depends on what they bring out, man. Cause I'm talking about in general Google. Because like, uh, oh, people Google. are going to be skeptical of Google itself. Google itself is pretty damn good. I mean, you name something, they got their hand on it. I mean, I mean you, can, you can run your entire house off Google. But do you worry about that as well? You really can't. Not, I mean, not just Google has your information or can can listen. I mean, you got the micro, you got the Sony camera that they were afraid you could listen on, and you know you got the Xbox camera and all this other bullshit. I mean, dude, if, if somebody wants to listen in from the from anywhere outside Google, whoever, they can do it. But I really don't think they are. But everybody's paranoid about it. Yeah, so and Adam, I'm with you on the same boat. I mean, I think I it's your cell phone, dude. That's got a mic on it or a camera. They can turn that on anytime they want. You think A and T and T don't have that capability? Yep. T-Mobile, come on. Exactly. I, I, I'm I'm more worried about the long term effects on society, but I don't really dwell on it. I just say, well, shit, that's going to be tough in 150 years if Google stays Look at strong. It this way. If you're not doing anything wrong, don't worry about it. Exactly. But you know, I, we all watch those sci-fi movies, right? You ever see? Um, what was that one with Ethan Hawke, uh, Gal- Gattaca? I don't know about that one. This movie Gattaca, right? Basically, this. Well, I mean, you can just look at Amy the State. Might as go and everybody's yeah. watched. There you go. Minority Report. Any Minority of these Report. things. Um, yeah, obviously, because of movies like that, it instills this fear that they're going to come out and be bad one day. But I think um, there's always money. And, and right now, money is shifting in my mind that money and data are kind of one and the same. If you have enough data, you have the money. And if you have the money, you have enough data. And um, so... In essence, when you have a, a company that, say you just create a database, and that database has a lot of people's information on it, you basically have currency, because someone will buy that from you. And um, I, I think when Google looks around, they see that uh, Fortnite can come along and become the biggest entity in the fucking world in, in three months. Uh, they want a, a piece of that. And I think that Fortnite and games like that push them to be more, more of a proponent in the market. And I know of the game called New World. Amazon's doing the same exact thing, and I didn't even realize it. I've been, you know, beta testing that for a while. They have their own MMORPG coming out. And so, anyways, I wanted to bring this up because just recently, uh, yesterday, and, and I don't know if it was a glitch, but you can get you can get Xbox Live, or I'm sorry, what's it called? Xbox Game Pass. Game Pass. You can get Game Pass for a dollar for the remainder of your PS or game. Games with gold, so you can have if you have if you have uh, gold for 36 months. You can get it for a dollar. Have this. You push it out right now today. You buy the thing 36 months out, and then you get this uh, game pass. You get game pass for 36 months for one dollar total, and then 14.99 a month. And I was saying to Joe as we were walking around today, it's probably because they're gonna have to Microsoft and, and Sony are gonna have to do something big. And uh, make people happy with their with their services because it's gonna make it free. I'm telling you, it's gonna be free in 36 months. Yeah, or less. Yeah. And so if they do that, then everyone paying this. So I was saying it's it's probably a ploy to get people. How can we extend people through the beginning of next generation, right? So if, if everyone signs up right now for 36 months, they got them for three years. Uh, even if the first year of next generation sucks for Microsoft, they got them by the balls. And if they, one of the things Microsoft's doing that Sony is not is these games are playable. A lot of them are playable on your PC. Yeah, that's true, too. I think Xbox is really coming around with the PC and the Xbox. I, I, yesterday, I downloaded Forza. I wanted, you know, because I know Joe likes racing games. If we had time, we're going to jump play it. Probably not this trip, but um, with that steering wheel, that steering wheel I got in G29 hooks right up to the computer. G29 is fun as shit, dude. Did you ever play the Forza series? Uh, I played the old ones on Xbox. Okay. Yeah, it's a Xbox uh, specific, but there's a lot of good games on that Game Pass. Look at that dolphin swing upside down for fun. Just look at these guys. That's what I'd be doing. I'd be like, look at this shit. So um, we're we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up here in a minute. But um, as we wind down, uh, I don't know, Joe. Um, you have any any high expectations of uh, or we already have high expectations, but do you have any any callouts? Any uh, anything you think might we might see in the next couple of days? What do you think Fortnite's gonna do for? 
Uh, I don't know. The Fortnite's better. They're going to do something for E3, I think. Well, they got they got their uh, World Cup coming up next week or two weeks from now. Two weeks from now, but I think they're going to – they're probably going to announce something at E3, I'm sure. Either a new map or – I think something's going to come out for Fortnite during E3. Yeah, and uh, Call of Duty's been talking about um, – they're, they're really hyping up this Modern Warfare. Yeah, they're, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, I'm going to hang off on the Call of Duty shit for a while. Oh, they, shit. They kind of – the multiplayer for this one wasn't that great. The blackout, the only thing that saved him for that. Do you think uh, this next one's going to have the Battle Royale? Um, you know, I don't think so. Different studio. I think they're going to keep it out. I hope they put it in. I hope they have their own rendition of it. I think it would be fun and fresh and new. Uh, and it would be awesome if you could cross-play Blackout with Modern Warfare. That would be kind of sick. See, we're coming up with ideas here, Backlog. They're probably listening anyway. Oh, they are. They are. Ladies, what do you have to say before we wrap it up? I have to go. She has to go pee. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty too. All right. I'm Joe. Oh, well, who? Wait, say it again. <laughs> I'm Joe. I'm Kevin. And this is the Backlog Podcast.